Hey troops, John J. Smith here, back with another LEGO Star Wars 2017 Last Jedi set review. Today we have the myth, the legend, the Wookiee, the one and only Chewbacca. He is of course the co-pilot to Han Solo and the co-pilot to the Millennium Falcon, possibly the most iconic vehicle in all of Star Wars and of course the vehicle that did save the galaxy on several occasions. The construction figure of Chewbacca, I'm going to say right off the bat, is my favourite of all the construction figures which actually has a face. As I've pointed out in a few other reviews, I really only tend to get the construction figures which have like helmets or specific things that don't show their face because personally speaking I'm not a massive a fan of the construction figures that have visible faces. To me, they just don't look correct, and I'd rather just get a regular action figure. Chewbacca here is the only exception to that rule because he looks incredible. He's about the same sort of height as K2SO, but I'll show you more about that later in the review. Nonetheless, this guy is amazing, and I'm going to say right now I would recommend getting him because yeah, he's really, really cool. He's iconic, and really, he's everything you could want from a construction figure. And when they first started this line a couple years ago now, this is really what the sort of thing I wanted. Just, he looks so good, and yeah. Taking a closer look, you can really see the amount of texture and detail that LEGO has put into this particular figure. Now, you may be forgiven for thinking that all the printing on the arms and the legs is all the same. In reality, there are two distinct different types of printing. On the upper arms and the upper legs, you can see here, we get this, you know, regular kind of sandish sort of yellowish kind of brownish type uh, printing as well as this blue and white kind of thing to give it more texture now personally I don't really know if he actually has this I guess he does because obviously Lego wouldn't put it on otherwise personally I have not noticed any blue on his body but you know I guess it's there please leave down in the comments if this is accurate I don't know why it doesn't feel very accurate but I guess it is something that Lego did try to add in for more detail on the lower arms and your lower legs you can see it's more of the exact same thing just without those blue accents so it's just more or less just completely plain there Again, I haven't actually seen any blue on Chewbacca from what I've watched, and of course I've watched Star Wars literally dozens of times, but, you know, if it is there, please leave it down in the comments because I'm unaware of it. Nonetheless, moving on to the torso, moving his belt type thing, I'm afraid I don't know the actual name of this, please leave it down in the comments as well if you do, but moving this out of the way, you can see his torso there, again, of course, the torso is the exact same mould as we get with basically all other construction figures, and you can see the printing there, the blue does kind of continue from the arm all the way around, so we get that like, on the um, side of the chest here, which is quite nice as well. Really, there's not an awful lot of particularly different printing in terms of because he is more or less just um, covered in fur, because of course that is kind of one of the biggest things about Chewbacca, one of the most iconic things about him. He's a very woolly creature, you know, so he does more or less just have the same kind of type of printing all throughout his body. Although, I will say, that being said, he does have some of the most printing, probably of any construction figure ever, purely because of the wool, which is quite nice. For a little while, I was a little concerned they were going to make this, uh, I'm not sure what it's really cool, but this belt type thing. I was going to worry they were going to make it into a print rather than an actual thing. I am glad they made it into an actual physical thing, which is very nice. You can see here, if I move the arm back, it connects very easily to this, I suppose, pouch type thing or bag, whatever it is. I'm not entirely sure, but this little thing he carries around, which also goes attached to this back of his body like that. And then it goes up and over, attaching to the back of his body like so. So if you so desire, you could remove it very easily, although I think he looks a lot better wearing it. Other than that, however, there's no real functions other than the actual spring load shooter, which of course you probably know how it works, but I'll just show you quickly. This thing, it is the same mechanism, the same sort of weapon that other construction figures have. The only difference is, of course, you can build on these crossbow uh, type arms type thing, which, you know, doesn't actually do anything for the actual thing, but they give it more detail, which is very nice. Moving here, if you want to fire it, the firing mechanism is actually, well, it's, it's nothing really too special. you kind of got to put your um, finger on that thing there, which if you can't see the sort of this thing that sort of hides up, you put it down and, well, <laughs> my finger was in the way at the time, but the point is you get, you know, if you push it down, it will go, and of course if you put it back in, and this thing does pop up again, and you simply, so it's quite nice, and I suppose it is, you know, trickier to accidentally fire, because that is one of the biggest issues I've had with these things before, where they're too exposed, so you, you know, just pick it up and you accidentally fire it, and of course because it fires so far, you lose it. Although, fortunately, they do give a spare one, which you actually can put on the side of the weapon right there, which is a very nice feature. I, I'm like those sort of sets where they do have a spare compartment for them, because to be honest with you, they do give you spare which is probably correct because you are going to lose them and it's a little annoying sometimes when you have nowhere to put them because it's like well if you have spares you know if you if you don't have anywhere to put the spares you'll lose the spares defeating the purpose of the spares anyway so yeah it, it's quite cool design as I said it's not incredibly easy to accidentally do although it is possible you know it, it really doesn't take a like a massive amount of touch where you just accidentally pick up like this and of course it fires so if you're picking it up from the weapon, I recommend not doing that because you probably will accidentally fire it there. It's not too hard to accidentally do it. 
nonetheless, that is more it to this figure, really. Of course, there isn't a massive amount to him. The back is pretty plain, but as I said in the past, I do like the fact that unlike some of the barnacles and other things, he does have some back printing, and well, not printing, but uh, back plating, if you will, to give it more of a complete look. Because some of the barnacles, they literally have just bare sort of the skeleton type thing with none of this. So I'm glad they do add that on the construction figures now. He does look quite bulky, as I said. He's more or less the same sort of height as K2SO, which is accurate, of course, because he is significantly taller than the average person person, but uh, yeah, really, that's more or less it. Of course, as I said, there's no real features to him as such, or in terms of, you know, actual action features. Like, my last review had uh, the Praetorian Guard, which there was a thing on the back, you could turn it and the arms would move, which was quite cool, but this does not have it, so, you know, it really depends on, you know, if you particularly like those features, maybe you don't use them. If you literally put this on display, and you ne never even use the features anyway, then it won't really matter that this has no real play features, but it really comes down to you, of course. That being said, as I said, beginning, a really cool thing, not a massive amount of features, but the detailing and the texture, and the fact that just overall, I think it looks so good as a construction figure, which is a little surprising, because as I said, I don't really like the construction figures with the regular faces, I think they look a bit odd, to be honest, and I'd rather just get regular action figures than Lego ones, this one, however, does work, so, yeah, that being said, let's now move on to the instructions of the box, and include my review of the one and only... Chewbacca. With 179 pieces, this is double the size of my previous review, which was the Praetorian Guard, so you would think this would come with a little more in terms of advertising or something like that. Unfortunately, it doesn't. It comes with literally nothing. This is the amount of advertising you get. In the previous review, the instruction manual came with two posters of like some really cool artwork and scenes of the new sets. Unfortunately, however, despite the fact this is the biggest construction figure of his entire line, it comes with literally nothing. As you can see there, it's got 56 pages of build, but that is a little disappointing. Now, of course, yes, no buys this set for the instruction manuals is not really a big deal and it's kind of debatable whether I should even point this out in the review whatsoever but I just thought it was something that I would point out because it's still kind of cool to see the little artworks in the back but nonetheless, let's now move on to the box. As you may have worked out, the box is significantly larger than the average construction size box. Going back to the review I just did, you can see here overlapping it, the Chewbacca box is significantly larger. And this is closer to the size of the Darth Vader box if you have that set as well. Now the art on the back here is something that I really want to point out. This looks like the planet, I'm afraid I don't know the actual name, but it looks like the planet at the end of The Force Awakens where Rey meets Luke. And of course that has the Millennium Falcon and the cliffs and all that stuff. And it looks really, really cool. Like unbelievably awesome actually and just a little note for those of you curious I am planning to get the UCS Millennium Falcon of course that is not the UCS Millennium Falcon but I am planning to get the UCS Millennium Falcon eventually maybe not when it comes out but hopefully before Christmas it's really kind of up in the air I'm not 100% sure we'll have to see about that closer to the time nonetheless looking at the back of course we've got the one feature which is just the uh, missile shooting there which is quite cool as well as we just got a bit of art there which is also quite nice as it says there 30 centimeters tall the previous one I just did the Praetorian Guard was only 25 centimeters so this is technically five centimeters taller although for some reason it feels like it's even taller than that I'm not totally sh entirely sure why but it just feels like a really tall figure. Nonetheless, a really cool guy. Of course, this is the largest of all the construction figures for this line, and I think it is definitely worthy of that because it has to be one of the best we've got so far. And as I've said several times already, the fact that this is the only construction figure with a face that I actually like says a lot. So with that being said, let's now move on and conclude my review of the one and only... Chewbacca. Thank you guys for watching my review of the Lego Star Wars Chewbacca construction figure. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like down below as well as subscribing so you don't miss the rest of my last Jedi reviews. I will be doing most of the set apart from the other two construction figures and apart from the resistance pod which I personally don't particularly think is that cool in all honesty. But as I've said in previous reviews, if you really want to get those sets, leave it down in the comments and I will consider it if enough people ask me to do them. Nonetheless, here we have Chewbacca who as I've said many times throughout this review has to be one of the best construction figures we've ever got and for someone who doesn't like the construction figures which have the faces generally that is saying a lot this one has to be the best of the entire year which is saying something because the scout with the speeder bike construction figure was really really cool I will say that if you collect a lot of construction figures and if you're over your own shelf for them which by the way I also recommend I recommend if you have a lot of construction figures you make a specific shelf for them and display them really well just like in these sort of poses because they look really really cool sort of action poses from a distance they actually kind of look like actual 
actual action figures and really die cast display models, it looks really, really sick, I am telling you. Nonetheless, if you do have a shelf for construction figures, this would work really well alongside. I can imagine seeing this next to Darth Vader or Kylo Ren or some others. Now, unfortunately, they haven't as yet made a Han Solo construction figure. Hopefully, they will eventually, but they haven't made a Luke and unfortunately, they haven't made a Leia either, but hopefully, they will eventually and this would work really well with them. As I said, this is about the same sort of size as K2SO because he's a very tall guy in the actual films. So, you know, it would work is what I'm saying. Nonetheless, I would recommend him. I know he's the most expensive figure, which is probably why maybe he's not selling as well, because, you know, £30, considering you could get the Resistance pod for the same sort of price, it's a bit of a toss-up. If you're not into construction figures, then, of course, you're probably going to want to get the regular sets. But for those who are into construction figures or into barnacle or anything like that, I would highly recommend this guy because he is iconic, he's great, and I actually think in a few years, believe it or not, I actually think he could go up in price, which is saying a lot for a construction figure, because generally speaking, when they're retired, they don't tend to go up quite a lot. But that's my opinion. Nonetheless, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. My next review probably won't be coming for at least two weeks because I'm going on holiday. But until that point, I will catch you guys later, I guess. Bye, troops. The myth, the legend, the one and only Chewbacca, the of course the most famous Wookiee to have ever walked the earth. He hasn't walked on earth. Back with another Lego Star Wars 2017 Lego shit. Back with another Lego Star Wars 20. For example, on the forearms and the four legs, you can see the sort of blue accents little things to give a bit more detail. Whereas on the wait forearms, which which bit's the forearm? Is that the forearm? Oh, whatever. You can see the textures and printing which has gone into, into fuck. Please do give it a like down below and please subscribe as well because so, fuck that. That being said, I want to thank you for watching this review and I'll see you next time in my next review. Now I'm going to start again. Because that was shit.